In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up, install, and run the floating license server, and then how to activate floating licenses from said server. The first thing you need to do, and it's the most important thing, is to please open and read this setup and use this instructions PDF. Everything I'm going to cover is um, explained in detail in this document. This document is also updated with every new release that we have of the server. So what you're watching here might actually be outdated, whereas the PDF will always be up to date. This overview uh, really just sort of summarizes all the steps that we're going to do, which is essentially the first thing we're going to do is set up the server. Um, then we're going to set up the client, and then we're going to just request a floating license server. Okay, so here is the um, floating license server download. Um, here I am on a Mac. And the first thing you want to do is install this somewhere on your Mac or your Windows. I will explain the Windows here in a second. Um, it doesn't matter where it is, but you just need to put it somewhere. In my case here, I just put it in my documents folder. And we have the two applications. Now, these are command line applications. They are not normal applications that you can just double click and run. So because they're command line applications, you're going to have to run them in the terminal okay so you have to open up the terminal so you can go to your search bar and type terminal and then open up the terminal once you're in the terminal you want to uh, change directories which is cd and then the directory that you want to change to in my case i want to change to the documents folder uh, but here's a little trick you can just actually drag things into the terminal window and it'll actually give you the full path but this actually gives you the path all the way to the server so i'm actually going to delete just the server uh the actual application part because i just want to get to the the folder so then i'm going to hit and hit return so now it's basically switched me into this directory so now i'm in this directory now the second thing um Oh, sorry, I should have said the first thing we really want to do is, is actually set up the server. So we're going to go ahead and open this with any text editor. I'm going to use Sublime Text here, but any text editor uh, will open up the file. Because of the .ini, double-clicking on the file might not open it up into a text file, so just right-click and open it in a text file. As you can see, it's just a plain, plain text file. First thing you need to do is put in your registration code. Now, if you're running this as a, as a test, as a trial, you leave it blank. It will work with one license code for seven days. Um, and um, otherwise, you can get the license code from your uh, AE Scripts account. And as explained here, under the server configuration options, which is what we're going to be doing, the code starts with AAFLS. So the one in your account that starts with this, this obviously is not a working code, but you would copy this from your A scripts account and you would paste it right here. Okay? That's where you would paste your uh this is the floating license server license. It ends in SUL1 usually unless you have more than one license. Uh in this case, uh I'm gonna actually remove it because this is not a valid license code. This is just an example. So we're actually going to run in trial mode here. Um, then uh, this is the uh, the server port. Now, uh, this server port is just a random number that we chose. Um, and in many cases, this port will work just fine. But if you're having trouble connecting, you might want to try a different port number like 01 or 02 or 03 or a whole new number completely. If you look in the troubleshooting section at the very end of the PDF. Um, it explains to you how to use uh, certain tools on both Mac, Windows, and Linux to scan your ports to get an available port. Um, the log level, you can leave at the default zero. Uh, backup server, you can also leave at default. Uh, all of this stuff is sort of more advanced, so I'm going to leave that out of this documentary. I'm sorry, this tutorial, and um, same with the least expired time, just leave that alone. And then this is the other very sort of important section, which is where you basically put the licenses for your plugins or scripts or extensions that you want to run. So the, uh, the PDF actually includes a demo license for the test demo plugin that's included with the download. So we're going to actually use that demo plugin. So uh, here's a... a license for one user okay and this is a license for three users so i'm just going to take this one 
I'm going to copy it here, paste it under licenses. And what is, this is essentially explaining is that the server will aggregate licenses. So if I say, for example, bought one license and then I bought three more licenses, all I would do is list them here in order. And then the server, when launching, would realize that you actually have four licenses for this product. But again, because it's a trial, I'm actually going to just have the one license because it only can work. So once you've modified your uh, server.any config file, you just go ahead and file, save it. It needs to be saved. And so now at this point, we can go ahead and run the server. So the way you do that on Mac, when you're already in the directory where the server application is, so again, I did CD, then you do period forward slash and then um, the name of the server, which is AE scripts, you can start typing and then hit the tab key and it'll auto complete. So you don't have to type the whole thing. Once you've done this, you go ahead and hit return. And you can see here that, uh, aha, that my trial has expired. <laughs> so, uh, I'm actually going to pause now and get a real license and then I will come back. Okay. So, uh, forget running it as trial. We're going to actually go ahead and paste. Uh, an actual license file. This will be blurred out, but you would get this again from your account. So you put your real license file there, go ahead and save. And let's try running this again. Another little trick, you can hit the up arrow on the keyboard and it will auto populate the last command you typed. So again, period forward slash and the name of the server. Again, this is only once I'm already changed directories into this directory with the server. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and now it's successfully launched. So first it says um, that the server is signed and verified, um, and then it's uh, loaded the config file successfully, and it is valid for one activation, which is the license code that I just entered. It also successfully found the license for the test plugin, and then, then just some available commands. So I'm going to go ahead and hit S, for show, show server status. And what this now is gonna do is it's gonna give me two very important things. The server IP, and in my case, it actually has several IP address numbers. So I'm actually gonna just use the first one. And the server port, which is what we entered in the um, config file. So now I'm gonna open a second window. Now here I am. So what I'm gonna do in this demonstration is run the server on the same computer that I'm actually going to run the client, but this could be two separate computers on your network. And then in a second, I will show it on a windows machine. Um, that's also, so, so it's on the network. So again, here, I'm going to go ahead. Now this, what I'm going to do is configure the client machine. So again, I'm going to go ahead and CD and I need to CD into this, this server folder. So I'm going to again, drag any file in here and just delete the file name so it actually is going to just switch me into the server folder so i go ahead and hit and so again here it is already changed me into the server and now i'm going to run the license server tool which is how you configure the clients so that's explained here on configure client machines okay so uh the way i'm going to do this is again period forward slash which again is explained here and I'm going to start typing and I'm going to hit tab and it's going to autocomplete. And so because there's two that actually match this far, it stops there. And then I can actually then keep typing T-O-O -O, and then hit tab again. And it'll autocomplete. And here I need to know the IP address. So again, I get it from here. So this is the IP address. I'm just going to add and copy that. And then colon and now the per port, which is this one. And so now I'm going to hit enter and you can see here that it says, first it tells me where the plist was written on my system. Again, this path will be unique to every system. So you need to make sure to run the tool in your system so you know where it's written in your system. And then it also says that the connection to the server that was successful, that's because the server was actually running. If I had actually hit Q to shut the server, Okay, so now the server is not running, and I run the tool again. It says that the connection to the server was not successful. That's because the server needs to be running for it to be able to connect it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit up arrow here again to pull up the last command. 
And so now the server is running again. And now again, here up and here, I can run the tool again. And it says that the connection is successful. So now that the server is running and I have configured the client machine, which again, in my example, it's the same machine, but this could be two separate machines and most likely what the case is. I'm gonna now go ahead and I'm going to open up. First, I need to install the test plugin. So I'm gonna take it here on my Mac. So I'm just gonna drag this plugin file into the plugins folder. I already had it here, but I'll go ahead and replace it. And I'm gonna go ahead and launch um, After Effects. Okay, now we're in After Effects. And so now you, we're gonna go to the section here that says obtain a license from client, which again, make sure that the server is set up and running, which it is. And so then literally all you need to do is type at remote when you go to license the, the plugin. So we're gonna go ahead and just create a random comp here with a solid, and we're gonna put the test plugin um, which is um, here under a scripts is the license test plugin. So you can see here it's not licensed. So I just go ahead and hit on the register button. And if, if everything's configured correctly, it will automatically offer you to the our remote will automatically be entered. So I can just go ahead and hit activate. It says registration was successful. And the X is there. If we go ahead and look over on the on the server, uh, we can see here that uh, it, the server saw the request for the test plugin, and it granted it. And that's it. If you want to uh, move this license to a different machine, you can just hit register again here, and you can just deactivate the license. Deactivate. So the license was deactivated. And if we look on the server, you can see that the license was deactivated. Okay, that's how it all works on the same machine. So everything works exactly the same over on Windows. But just for the sake of uh, completion, we're gonna go ahead and show this same thing on Windows. So he, so basically all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, uh, so the, the same exact thing, thing works here. You run, you go into the search bar and you look for CMD, which is the command prompt. And here again, on, on Windows, you can change directories a little bit differently. So again, it's also CD to change directory, but here, uh, so here I've also installed the floating license server in the documents folder. So I just click here in the bar and you can see, actually I put it on the desktop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that whole path. And so here I can just say paste, uh, I right clicked for paste. So CD to this whole thing, I go ahead and hit enter. So now I'm here. And so uh, what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna, uh, run the server tool. So I'm gonna just, uh, on, on, on Windows, you don't have to do the period thing. You can just actually type. But same here, you can start typing the first few letters and hit the tab key, and it's gonna match the first thing. But in our case, we actually wanna match the, the tool. So I'm just gonna use the arrow keys to, to go back, and I'm gonna start typing tool here. And then uh, you can either leave the .exe or you can actually remove it. And then again, I'm gonna go back to the window, uh, sorry, the Mac machine. And I'm gonna go ask for ser server status so I can get the IP address and I'm just gonna copy it, copy. And I'm gonna paste it, right click, paste, colon, and the port, which is 2700, copy. And right click to paste, uh, well, I don't know why to paste, I'll just type it 27100. And go ahead and hit enter. And you can see here that it connection was successful. And I'm going to now uh, copy the Windows test plugin. I'm gonna move it over here to the Windows machine. So I'm gonna look for uh, After Effects, After Effects. I'm gonna right click, uh, open file location, show file location. And uh, where is the plugins folder? Here's the plugins folder. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the test plugin in there. And we're gonna go ahead and run After Effects. So now this is, uh, so again, the server now is running on the Mac and we're gonna to connect to it from the Windows machine, uh, configuring and running the server on the Windows and then connecting it to it from a Mac is exactly the same, everything it's pretty much the same. The only differences are like the small idiosyncrasies into how Windows operates a little bit differently within 
copy and paste and stuff like that. Okay, so now that I'm um, now here I'm in After Effects and we're gonna go ahead and run the, uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a new composition, new solid, and we're gonna go ahead and put the test plugin. As you can see here already that the server automatically connected to it on Windows. So it actually must have just remembered from the last time, but you can see here it's connected to the floating license and you can see here on the server on the Mac how it's connected to it. So again, we can de deactivate and license is deactivated and you can see here that the license has been dropped on the Mac. So everything works the same, uh, but uh, you know, depends on how you would like to have it set up. I hope this tutorial has been useful. Again, every single thing I covered is covered in detail, including the fact that Robite plugins have a slightly different activation procedure, so please go ahead and reference the PDF. And um, there's also some advanced stuff here uh, where you can run it as a server and control remote, et cetera, et cetera, but uh, we won't cover that here because uh, assuming that you are an IT administrator if you're doing these advanced things. Um, so that's it.